Good morning, and welcome to Calvary Chapel Chinese Fellowship Children's Sunday School. In today's lesson, we will be talking about how God blesses Israel through Balaam. This is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 1, through chapter 24, verse 25. But before we get started on our lesson, let's take time to worship our God through praise. Today's lesson is about how God blesses Israel through Balaam. This is from Numbers chapter 22, verse 1, and it's going to go all the way to chapter 24, verse 25, which is the end of the chapter. Today's lesson could actually be called Balaam, Balak, and the talking donkey. Wait a minute, what? A talking donkey? I bet you never thought a donkey could talk, did you? Well, with God, everything is possible. Today I will tell you the story of Balaam, Balak, and again, the talking donkey. As the Israelites were nearing the promised land, surrounding nations tried to stand in their way, forcing the Israelites to go to war with them. But God was on their side. And with each victory, the other nations grew very afraid of the Israelites. One nation, a nation called Moab, had a king named Balak. Now Balak was very afraid of the Israelites, and he knew that he wouldn't have any hope in victory over them. They were too strong. But then he remembered that he had heard about a former prophet named Balaam who had great powers. Some said that whatever Balaam blessed was truly blessed, and whatever he cursed was cursed. If Balak could get Balaam to curse the Israelites, his army might have a chance. So he sent some messengers to bring Balaam to him. They took along a lot of gold. That was the money that they used in their day. King Balak wanted to curse the Israelites so they would no longer be a danger to his kingdom. 
Now Balaam, he believed in God. He had once been a prophet, but he had become greedy and no longer served God. Yet, when the messengers arrived, he told them that he must seek God's instructions. So that night, Balaam asked God for instructions, and God told him, Do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people, because I have blessed them. So Balaam sent the messengers home. But Balak, the king, sent more messengers. He wasn't satisfied with that. He sent even more gold this time. Balaam knew that God did not want him to go. So he said, King Balak could give me his whole palace full of silver and gold, but I cannot disobey the Lord God. But God knew that Balaam really wanted to go. So that night he said to Balaam, These men have come to ask you to go with them. Go, but only do what I tell you. So Balaam saddled his donkey, and he went with the messengers. But as he was traveling, Balaam didn't see that there was an angel standing in the road blocking his way. But his donkey did, and she walked off the road into a field. Balaam beat the donkey to get her back to the road. The angel appeared a second time and the donkey moved against a wall, smashing Balaam's foot. Balaam beat her a second time. Oh, goodness. The third time the angel appeared, there was no place for the donkey to go, so she just laid right down on the road. It was after this beating that the Lord made it possible for the donkey to speak. The donkey asked Balaam, what have I done to make you beat me these three times? Balaam was so angry that he answered without thinking, You've made a fool out of me, he said. You have ridden me for years, though, the donkey responded. Have I ever done this to you before? And that is when Balaam finally saw the angel. If your donkey hadn't turned away from me, I would have killed you by now, the angel said. Balaam's life had been saved by his donkey. Oh, I have sinned, said Balaam to the angel. If I am wrong, I will go back. The angel answered, Go ahead, but you will only be able to say what the Lord wants you to say. So when Balaam finally met Balak. He warned Balak, I can only say what the Lord wants me to say. They went to three different places that day. Balak asked Balaam to curse the Israelites. But every time Balaam opened his mouth, blessings for the Israelites came out. After the third time, Balak was angry. Go home, he ordered. I called you here to curse my enemies but you have blessed them three times. But didn't I tell you I couldn't do anything against the command of the Lord? Balaam answered. But before Balaam left, God had him say one more thing to Balak. He told Balak what the Israelites would do to Balak's country. Surely they would destroy it. And he told them of a star that would rise out of Jacob. That star, of course, would be Jesus, the one who would save the world. And Jesus did come, and he will come again. So God taught Balaam that everything we do is important, and we must worship God because we love God. And so worship involves everything you do. It is living a life that is pleasing to God. Worship is listening to God's voice and following his commands, which is also called obedience. It is using our voices and the things that we say and the things that we do to honor God. In John chapter 14, verse 23, God reminds us, 
Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. So we must obey the Lord our God. And the other thing that we learned is that God always keeps his promises, as he did by protecting the Israelites. We must also always keep our promises. That's the end of our lesson for today. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope that it brought you closer to God. It's very important to have a really good relationship with God, and we do that by spending time in His Word and praying to Him. Let's pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts and grateful hearts at all that you've done for us, and Lord, that You've given us your word to help us to live better lives, to lead lives that are pleasing to you. Lord, help us to obey you. And Lord, we thank you for the promises that you keep because they are only for good. And Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our parents and our families. And in this time, we just pray for everyone. Lord, just keep them safe and healthy. And those that are sick, heal them. Lord, we can do nothing without you. We love you so much, and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. That's all for today, but we'll have a new lesson next week. So in the meantime, remember to trust and obey. Goodbye. Goodbye.